to my heart until it Hey, slide on hip block, I'ma blow like confetti She said she wanna have my baby, but she not ready Slide with me, better my I woke up Still how I walk in it, out of the streets Jumping by this money, I spoiled it on holiday Drunk off the hitty, I'm missing you Body wide, give up my heart and my head going to so Cage has been making waves in the underground with his unique take on the emo rap sound genre. Ever since he blew up back in late 2021, with his vocals ranging from calm and soothing to loud and energetic. Wait, you sitting right here by my side, but I have to keep on burning fire. Yeah. Fool, I'm so damn lit. Shot close, fuck niggas, keep it in my backpack. Fuck. Yeah. Foot on next, I ain't never gonna step back. And he's all doing this at the very young age. But how did he get here? Is he an industry plant? What connections did he make to get to where he's at now? Well, let's see. Daniel Jerome J. Brett was born on January 11, 2002 in Virginia, making him sign the Capricorn for anyone who gives a shit about that. He attended Walker Grant Middle School and lived in Virginia until the end of his middle school year. And his family then moved to Summersville, South Carolina, where he was still pretty young. The reason why they moved there is because his father was stationed there for the military. As he is a kid from the 2000s, he did grow up playing a lot of video games. He created the game Rock Band for getting him to bands like Weezer, Soundgarden, and Radiohead. If you want to play the game yourself, it's released for PlayStation 2, 3, 4, PlayStation Portable, Xbox 360, and Xbox One, as well as the Wii and the DS. His parents also introduced him to 90s hip hop and R&B as his parents would have been playing around the house. Growing up, he would just have a very normal life as a kid in a quiet town in South Carolina. He also would have little to no interest in making music. His plans were to just join the military after high school like his father, but life had something different for him. It's crazy knowing though that he would have been a soldier instead of a rapper. Around Joe's sophomore year of high school, he started getting into making music. He'd always have his earphones in the class while listening to music, and in his free time, he'd work on his own music. After making his first tracks, he realized the path that he wanted to take. Not to join the military, but to make music. Some of his earliest work can still be found on his SoundCloud, such as his first song on the page, labeled Again. Again, again. No, I do not need no friends. How about the foreign again? Again. Find us a bitch and a friend. Again, again. Married to money and Zen. Again. Again, R.P. Gus and Uzans, what? Ooh, R.P. Gus and Uzans, chop a bus, a muzzle burn in my hand. Diamond dancing, BBS on a man. Blue cheese, half a pipe for a band. I just want K. Bust a nigga, turn his ass to a lake. Stupid nigga, all these bitches is fake. Give me some money and fuck out my face. His first songs were more R&B inspired, but after listening to SoundCloud artists like X, Juice World, Lil Uzi Vert, he got inspired and wanted to make music more towards that style. An issue that he talked about and said that he struggled for for a while now is coming up with his name, which in the world of hip hop is something that you have to take very seriously. You don't want to be the guy known for having some goofy ass name. For example, this guy right here, this man named himself Big Moochie Great, bro. Like who? Who's gonna go on the ox and say, bro, play that new Big Moochie great? The day that happens is the day I go bald, that's all I'm saying. Anyways, this man Joe Kenji had the first part of his name, Joe, as he was always called Joe his whole life. It's like a little nickname that he's always had. At first, his name was Joe Benji, but he scrapped it because it was, in his own words, mad fucking corny. I had Joe, I was gonna use Joe, but I was like, I need like another like part of my name. So I was like thinking of shit, and it was like, the first idea I had was like Benji. But that was mad. For Benji fucking, for like money. Yeah, that's mad fucking corny. Then he switched the letters around and finally got the word Joe Kenji. While he was making his early tracks, he linked up with the producer Cody, and they instantly clicked. They both taught each other how to use GarageBand and how to get better at music. Cody himself is now a multi platinum producer, produced for artists like Juice World, The Kid Leroy, Lil Teka, Don Tolliver, It Was Vert, and Destroy Lonely, to name a few. Joe Kenji's career will keep growing and keep releasing singles, and eventually release his first ever EP, The Introvert EP. Which is a four track EP showing off his raw talent. Early morning trapping, fuck the boys. Bitch, I keep his dishes, quit the cap and fuck the noise. Ride around with that chop and fat your way to with my toys. Barbie in the back, you think she cute, but she gon' bust like it's Iraq and I ain't even front this bitch, but I might put it on the map. You niggas fake, I yell out slap because I'm slimy, that's a fact. I ain't know that shit, come get your bitch up off my back. I'm busy running to the rack, she on me hopping, she a lap. Ayy, dick is a bitch, she got ass in the back. I got the Glock, she spray yeah. with the Mac. Dip in the designer, I'm spinning my cash. You niggas broke and I stay with the bag. So fucking drippy, I'm flooding the city. You niggas, I pity, you not fucking with me. I took your bitch and she licking the dicky. I'm done with you hoes, it's back to the chick. Baby bottle full of syrup. My young niggas try water early. Ride around with a Shirley. Try to test me, die early. I got no love to get, little baby. Leaning my soda fizz, little baby. She wanna fuck, can't you going crazy? Introvert, wanna feed you to pay me. In August of 2020, Joe Kenji was doing his thing, making music, networking, and living life as an underground artist. When he get a DM from none other than John Hicks, a talent manager over at Internet Money, he would ask Joe Kenji to hear some of his unreleased songs, and Joe Kenji would send him over. John would then end up ghosting him for three weeks. 
before randomly calling Joe and asking him to fly him out to Los Angeles to have a studio session in the Internet Money headquarters, meaning that Joe Kenji was officially signed to Internet Money and 10K Projects, which is another label that has signed artists like Jaleel, Ice Spice, Summers, Chippy Red, etc. His first release after signing was 100 Rounds, and you could instantly just hear the sound quality going up. It was also produced by Diamond Award winning producer Nick Mira. For him to still be pretty deep underground this time and have a major record label sign him, as well as these producer linkups, it's just crazy. Keep in mind he's doing this all at the time of being 17 and still in high school. Honestly, it just proves that anything's possible at this point. In November 2020, he would drop his debut studio album, Tears and Pistols. This album still holds up pretty well and has a song, Coding Punch on it, which is a pretty popular Joe Kenji song if you don't know. I count bands every day as I get money on the regular. I can get your heart just on my paddock, I don't need to flirt. I just took this yucky yucky that bitch made my stomach hurt. If the albums pull up on me, I'm gonna make this blicky twerk. Later on Christmas, he dropped his next project, Race Me to Hell. Yet another well produced album for Joe Kenji. His flow, writing, and production is honestly improved between the both projects, and it shows how strong his work ethic really is. Later on the 30th of December, he teases fans with the song title. That song was titled Kill Cupid, featuring Snot. And two months later, he dropped his album called Eat Your Heart Out, which had the song with Snot on it. To this day, it's one of his biggest songs, and it dropped three really good albums in under a year. That's really impressive for an artist that's still underground. To drop three good quality albums in under a year is basically unheard of. I'm looking at you, Triple Red. But anyways, Joe did that, and he made it sound good. Later on, he proceeded to drop another album called F*** Your Feelings, and this album is honestly just emo rap at its core. If you're going through a breakup or you're just depressed, just listen to this album and you're, you'll probably relate to a lot of the things he's talking about. After the release of this album, he'd go on tour and even perform at Rolling Loud Miami. And after another amazing year, this man would drop another album. The album was called With or Without You and also debuted a new aesthetic from him. He got rid of that rock star aesthetic and started going for a more chill and laid back type style. I do like this aesthetic more from him, but those other albums are still really good. He then followed up with another EP called Lost In Here. This is the time that I found Joe Kenji. When I found this, I was amazed, bro. I loved his work on this, like I like I like how he made emo rap not sound corny. Like I don't know, I was just amazed by this. He also stepped up his feature game with this album, with features from DC The Dawn, Mike Dimes, and Josiah. But this album was mainly made to serve as hype for his next album. And on August 26, 2022, Joe Kenji dropped his biggest and best project to date, Anywhere But Here. This album fully displays Joe Kenji's talent in every corner and it just shows his versatility, honestly. We also get features from No Cap, Midwest, and Primary Cash Dominic. And I'm telling you right now, when this album dropped, I was listening to this shit for like three weeks straight. I'm not even lying. The way it goes from hype shit like so what to chill shit like alone, it's just crazy. Man. Okay, I'm up, I'm wide awake. I see the phony and the fake niggas mad cause I get paid first. Cool me down, she fuck rappers. I ain't had to fly her to me. Don't run down on Lil Kenji. I keep big ass blickies with me. Run down on the game right now, all my niggas on go. Red dot with a five, five, six niggas, keen on dubs. I got big bag, roll up, smoking gas, pull up. He get blame, blown up, he get black, so. With you sitting right here by my side, but I have to keep on burning fire. album dropped he kept on dropping you feel me he kept dropping singles and just pushing his wave on the underground he made more songs with fellow rapper mike dimes they made songs such as step back kiss and tell and do not disturb
vacate. I turn the hoe down, she ain't getting rich like me. Hide in a bitch, yeah, you know I need to smoke weed. Big doze is smoking a pound. Slumped over, I ain't even lit yet. Up early, kicking a hoe out. I buy my favorite hand at. He also dropped a handful of singles by himself and just staying in the spotlight of internet money. He has unreleased songs with people like Machine Gun Kelly and is rumored to be on internet money's next album whenever they drop it. He pretty recently dropped another album called Wish You Were Here and the quality jump from both albums are just insane. I personally like how Joe doesn't let himself get carried by features or really have many features on his album. He just kind of does his own thing and I respect him for that honestly. Also another thing that he can do pretty well is switch up the flow like 5 or 6 times and make that shit sound slick as fuck. Just wait in a couple years he's definitely gonna be a mainstream artist. I already see a bunch of support from the Juice World fan base and the internet money fan base as you know they have a lot in common. And something that you could take away from his story is that he worked day and night grinding networking trying to make new connections and everything bro and he honestly deserves all of his success when you want something and you want it to succeed make it an obsession make it so you're obsessed with the idea of wanting that thing when you're obsessed with it to the point where nothing can get in the way that's good literally as i mentioned nothing can get in your way so do that whatever goal you have in mind whatever passion you have do that because you would rather live knowing that that passion worked out then live in regret for the rest of your life knowing that you could have done something with that and that right there is the story of joe kenji thanks for watching